here fashioning silver teeth for people was a sideline for Revere. So. <laughs> oh, wow. so, interesting. Uh, interesting too, but, uh, it says, do not touch the weapon. Do not touch, it says. I mean, don't touch. Yeah. How did they get cut? Well, it's been non-New Richmond by 1708. Really? Okay, there we go. Yeah. But it's been imported and exported simultaneously by 1750. It comes in ballast and ship from England. Oh, right, because they needed something to hold them. Right, the way. you have to have a ballast that has commercial value. Right. So coal can be offloaded and sold. Interesting. And then, then, then whatever extra wow. ballast they need, they could use with send back with American coal as ballast. Right. You know, so uh, very cool. It's always uh, it's always interesting. But charcoal yeah. is uh, uh, you know, colliers in, in, in the colonies. This one an important trade. Oh. Rifle. And this is a, a copy of the most widely used coin in colonial America. It's a Spanish milled dollar. You know, milled means. Milled means that edge. You ever see a quarter now? It's got a chopped edge. So you can tell uh, at a quick visual check whether the coin had been shaved down or not, removing precious metal. Uh, if you live in the backwoods, this is the most efficient way to get deep. A deer skin sold for one Spanish dollar, so if you've ever called a dollar a buck, that was why. Yeah. All the ones on the walls here, you can pick this one up if you want to. Don't cock it or point anybody. Uh, the rifle's the most efficient way to get deer skins in a pre-agricultural frontier economy. It's about the only way to make cash money. No, it's not. <laughs> it's eight pounds. Uh, if you make a gun lighter, it kicks off. Well, Newton's third law of motion says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if that gun were the same weight as the bullet that it fired, Gun and bullet would go in opposite directions at exactly the same speed. The gun has to be hundreds of times heavier than the bullet that fires to be comfortable to shoot. So this gun is a pound and a half lighter than the gun used by American troops in World War II and Korea. M1 Garand used in World War II in Korea weighed nine and a half pounds. This gun weighs eight. So a modern big game hunting rifle weighs the same. Now 22, you can make it lighter because the bullet's lighter and being pushed slower. You know, BB guns can be light because the bullets are light, you know. But if you have a heavy enough bullet to be able to take a big game with, you need a heavy enough gun to absorb recoil. BB guns don't use gunpowder. Right, they use air. So but they're still recoil. But they're on The thing jumps. Yeah, it does. When the release of that air pushing that bullet out, sends a gun back for them. Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Today's money or? Today. Well, no one has a gun if they cost fifteen thousand. No, no, I, I thought you were talking. <laughs> no. Well, today we make these guns the way they used to be made. We use eighteenth century technology and uh, charge twenty-first century labor rates. So today it's fifteen to twenty thousand. In the eighteenth century, uh, this gun would cost Daniel Boone about four pounds Virginia money, and that's what uh, two wheels for an ox cart cost. That's what a couple of saddles cost. That's what his first 15 deer skins cost. So, in, in a world where everything is made by hand, hand labor is nothing out of the ordinary. Part of a sword. See the swords behind the scales? It's the bow. The bow of the sword. Join us too. Ask about anything you're curious about. We made all the guns in here. Uh, the things on the bench here, you're all welcome to pick up and handle too. Take a closer look at. Did you have a question, if I know about? Uh... Yeah, mold for making a pewter spoon. <laughs>